I'm Bob Brill. He's Eric Kramer. Welcome to Kramer and Brill, an NFL podcast and video cast. Each week, we take a look at what's going on in the NFL. And during the season, we analyze your fantasy picks, and we are just about in the season. Week one is here, and it's just my esteemed colleague, former Bears and Lions quarterback Eric Kramer, and I go, well, hey, game by game with our picks and our pans, and we're going to jump right in. Might as well, you know, Thursday night, Bills at Rams. You know, I'm solid on Josh Allen, but I'm really soft on Matt Stafford, and I'll tell you why. I'm not sure he's recovered from those elbow issues. Uh, Love and Cooper Cup. I'm ready to see how James Cook does in his NFL debut. And Stefan Diggs is a go as well. Don't mean to call you out right away just coming out of the gate, but Matthew Stafford can't wait for people like you to doubt him, just like everybody was doing down the stretch last year. And the guy answered. So I think we got no issues there. Cooper Cup obviously is legit. But I think the combination of Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson is going to hurt both of their value uh, fantasy-wise. But I think it's now that they're both healthy again, the Rams got to be right at the top of the list. And what a great game I think this is going to be with them and the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I, I think uh, starting off season with this game is just absolutely perfect. Uh, Saints at Falcons, let's go to Sunday. Not much to see here. Kamara is, uh, you know, the best bet, but I don't like anything. I, w- I wouldn't play anybody. I would even play the tight end. Uh, what's his name? Kyle um, Kyle Pitts for for the Falcons. I just don't like this team at all. There's nobody there. Interesting again because I think the Falcons have a great head coach. They've do- they've added a lot of pieces in this off season. I think Kyle Pitts is coming along. The one you just mentioned. I think Max Mariota is coming along. And I think he's the perfect quarterback for this uh, this system. And so I think, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, Calvin Ridley is not there anymore. But I think uh, Marietta and um, and Kyle Pitts are going to do some damage. But I also, th- I also think that uh, Jameis Winston is proven may- are looking to prove people wrong as well. And I think, uh, was it Chris Olave they got from Ohio State? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Michael Thomas is back now, right? So... Yeah. I, I think uh, I think the Saints, as you mentioned, Camaro, but I also think the receiving uh, aspect of what the Saints are going to bring this year is going to surprise a lot of folks. Yeah, I just think Kyle Pitts is going to be triple teamed. <laughs> I don't think he's going to do anything. I, that's just this game. I think it, I just don't like what I'm seeing. Niners and Bears. I'll let you start. This is your team. All right. Well, I think this is going to be a great game, and I'm looking for uh, what's been trending all along this preseason has been the. Uh, development and growth starting way back in as soon as the season began or as soon as the off season began with Justin Fields. And what's that going to translate into is not only he is putting up, I don't know if you saw him against the Browns, their last preseason game, but he was ridiculously on fire. But then Cole commits the guy I think that's going to benefit the yeah. most from that. We all know about Donnell Moody and how talented he is, but I think Cole commits the guy that was so undercoached last year. I think he's been really coming on um, this preseason as well. That's the guy that's in the red zone. He's very he's a down the field threat. He can stretch the middle of the field, and um, and, and again, I think the development both of um, of Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney is going to be the key to all that. Well, I, I just look at this as the battle of two young quarterbacks who were picked in the first round in the same season, Trey Lance and Justin Fields. One of them is going to surprise. It's just a matter of which one. I, I think your Bears uh, are, are up on this one. Uh, don't forget, Brandon Alluk, I think, is a guy to watch as well for, for the Niners. Uh, Brown, I agree with you. Before you move on, yeah, I will yeah. say this with the Niners. It's always going to come down to two people, Debo Samuel and George Kittle, who are two of the best at what they do. True. That's what I think. And, and these two offenses are very similar in the way they go about um, attack and defenses. So I'm actually going to be there at the game. So uh, I'm looking forward to, as a lot of Bear fans are. Well, I, I, I just think that this one's going to come down to quarterback play and more than anything else. And if anybody else does well, it's going to be because of the quarterback play. Uh, Browns at Panthers. Browns have some interesting aspects to check on. Uh, did you see they signed former Steeler tight end Jesse James. Not that it you matters. worked that in there. Not <laughs> that it matters. But it could later on when they go to play the Steelers. You know, I, I actually had the website name um, the outlaw Jesse James, eighty three, when he was starting to you know really take off with the Steelers right. when they had that the big play and everything and the play that was named after him, and then he gets traded, and he changes his number, so I said ah, I'll let it go. <laughs> I'm not paying for it anymore. Anyway, Nick Chubb should have a good day, especially if Kareem Hunt doesn't play as much. I'll just say the Panthers are an enigma to me, and made further confusing by Baker Mayfield. 
Um, there's not much about him I like as a quarterback. And I think his immaturity level just follows him wherever he goes. And uh, not that he can't play, he just can't play consistently well. And I think the Browns, on the other hand, there's really it's really hard to predict what they're going to do because their best player is not playing for a while. And uh, uh, so I, that really calls into question to me, what are they going to do other than run the ball? And so I, I agree with you. I think Kareem Hunt, or Nick Chubb, probably not both, but if you had one, I'd play one. Yeah, you know, it, it's going to be interesting uh, because it's the Browns losing Mayfield, and the first game that he gets to play is against his old team. So it's it's going to be an interesting uh, interesting matchup from that perspective. And sometimes that I'm works. Sure there's one better. guy that you just mentioned that's very interested in playing well in this game. Who's that? The one you just mentioned. Oh, all oh, right. <laughs> Well, you know, before we get the Steelers and Bengals, you notice I haven't shaved in a while, and there's a reason for that. I'm not shaving. I vowed not to shave until the Steelers win their first game. So I'm not shaving at least until Sunday. So we'll see what happens. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> They're taking on the Bengals uh, in, in Cincinnati. Look for Joe Burrow to have a good game, as Mixon and Chase are going to have good games. Steeler D may be good for a look this week, only because of the possible takeaways. And I, I believe the special teams are going to crank it up. I think they've really improved on special teams with the gunner. And on offense, I really like Najee Harris and Trubisky. And it may be too early to test the waters with George Pickens. Deontay Johnson is solid, but again, it's just this is a team in transition, and I'm not so sure I would bet on a whole lot of people on this team except for for Najee and uh, maybe I, I like the defense and maybe Deontay Johnson. I'm going to jump the fence here on where I was a couple years ago on Mitch Trubisky. I have been I haven't watched a great deal of him this preseason, I but every now and then I'll catch a highlight or two and he's on it. Yeah, and I think he's making good decisions now. He's accurate with the ball, which is the most important thing for him. And now his athleticism becomes a factor because he can throw the ball. Uh, he's not just dropping back and looking to run. and They're not just calling design rollouts for him where it's pick one guy to throw to or run yourself. And so I think he has developed a little bit. Um, and I think the Steelers are going to be the beneficiary of that. Also, I think Matt Canada, this new, cr this new crop of uh, – of quarterbacks along with, uh, you know, who they've had in the passing game. There's still an issue with the offensive line, but I like Matt Cannon. Huge. I knew him back when he was a college coach. Uh, met him at um, my former coach with the Bears, one of them, uh, Ron Turner, uh, when he was coaching the head, head coach of Illinois, had a, had a uh, quarterback receiver camp, and Matt Cannon was there. And I thought we, we got set aside a couple times talking about uh, football and I, I was impressed with him back then anyway so I'll say this though the Bengals I would not take the Steelers defense this week this is one of the elite offenses and getting better look at what they did last year with zero offensive line mm -hmm. and that crew everybody across the board skill wise is who you'd want to have on your team if you were starting one today and well, um I, I, I think and the thing I, I like about the Steeler D this time is they are takeaway defense. But the other thing is they have to make up for the offensive line because I think the Steeler offense is not going to go a whole lot this year, uh, at least to start. And that's they picked up a couple of guys just recently who are going to help, but it's going to take a couple of games, I think. So, I mean, that offensive line is – I got people and friends in Pittsburgh saying, how could the offensive line be worse than it was last year? But it is. You know, so we'll have to wait and see. And that, that means – aggressive defense and that's where i think the defense might be a good play this week I, I agree with you but i think they've got a good decision maker now quarterback i don't care if it's pickens or pickett or trubisky and i think they got one of the elite running backs in the league too and yeah. as you have eagles at lions lions i'm taking golf right now and i think against the eagles i'd go with him unless you have one of the big guys uh, i do like deandre swift as an uh, rb1 and jalen hurts is definitely worth a start here and i'm with you i think golf has been on fire this preseason he's making good decisions playing confidently now i think that stretch they had at the end of the season did them all uh, uh a bit of service as a team and i'm on ross st brown is off to a great start don't forget like i mentioned before tj hawkinson dude this guy can play man and they they've started to develop into identifying what he can do and can do very well so you start to see this offense starting to gear around him a little bit more Colts in Texas, Justin Taylor, Michael Pittman, all natural starts. Texans, they're all on the bench. Texans cut Marlon Mack just yesterday. 
Yeah, I agree with you. There's not a lot to say. This is going to be a one-sided, lopsided affair, I think. Patriots, Dolphins, Mac Jones ready for prime time? No, but if he is, if if he's all, you got to start him in. You know, if if he's what you have, it's all you got. You got to start him, and it looks like maybe you know he he may uh, end up uh, being uh, the the guy that they really really want to see play in New England, but we'll have to wait and see. Finns look good. Uh, Jalen Waddle, I like, and I definitely start Tyreek Hill. The guy that everybody's turning into this game to watch is Tua Tagovailoa. That's the only guy that matters in this game because if he can't play, and I'm not so sure that he can, uh, this is going to be a disaster season because they have built up quite a squad other than the quarterback. I think they got it wrong taking Tua, um, but we're all going to find out. And it's going to be a good defense they go up against. And they've got some weapons now, the Dolphins do. Um, and I think the running game for the Patriots and their defense is what going to keep them in this game. Ravens and Jets. Ravens pretty much uh, the tight ends use them. Lamar Jackson and the D. Uh, the Jets may or may not be without Wilson at quarterback. The kicker, Tucker, is a must-have. If Wilson doesn't play, I'm all over Brees Hall here. Uh, the rookie is really solid. And I think, you know, we all know that Lamar Jackson – is about to make a statement this season. And, um, you know, he he knows that this whole offense revolves around him. And I think he's looking to um, basically tell the rest of the league, I'm available. And the, if, if the Ravens can tailor an offense around their quarterback, so can a lot of other teams. And we've seen, um, you know, a lot of teams do that over the years now, now that you've got some more athletic quarterbacks out there. Yeah. Jaguars at... Somebody named the Commanders. I still can't get used to saying that. <laughs> Commanders are a go with Gibson and McLaurin. Jags, is Trevor Lawrence a start? Not on my list. At least not yet. And I think, but like, I think we can all see the Jaguars are moving in the right direction. So it mm -hmm. might not be the beginning of this year, but there's going to be quite a few people, including uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, a couple of their receivers. Uh, this is going to be a good team eventually. Not right now to start out. And certainly I don't think the Commanders are either. But McLaurin's always a good possibility um, for them. And uh, is it Antonio Gibson, the running back? Yeah, yep. Is solid also. Yeah, Giants and Titans. I, I still can't find anyone on the Giants I like. Well, the Titans, they're both solid with Tannehill and Derrick Henry. After that, you know, you got some options there. But uh, I, I don't like anybody on the Giants. I, I, I can't even get around Saquon Barkley. <laughs> that That's the guy, man. He's got a – he's he's he has not – health-wise, been able to live up to what he's done as a rookie. And I think this is the year now people are saying, okay, there's a new offensive staff in place, new, new coaching staff in place, and a more wide-open style of offense. And I think that's going to benefit Barkley tremendously. I, but I still think you have the sometimes good, sometimes horrible uh, quarterback in uh, – what's I can't remember the Giants quarterback name right now. Daniel uh, Jones. Got Duke, Daniel Jones. Yeah. And so until he gets things going himself where he can at least drop back, make the right read, get to the ball to the right guy on time and let him run with it, until he can be that Daniel Jones, I think it's going to be hard to bet on any of the Giants. Yeah, I think he's got a real short leash this year. I, I'm not sure he's going to be around next year unless he can pull something off. Chiefs and Cardinals, I'm loving me some Juju here as I'm sticking with my prediction. Juju Smith-Schuster is going to have a monster year right from the start with Mahomes, who's also, of course, a solid start. I do like Cardinal quarterback Kyler Murray again this year. It's a must start for James Conner, but keep your eye on him. Uh, it's just, I don't know. He had such a great year last year. Your expectations may be a little high this year, so we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I think all the Chiefs are starters uh, if you've got them. Uh, obviously, somebody's going to step up. We don't quite know who it is yet to replace Tyreek Hill. But I think Patrick Mahomes showed me at the end of last year, probably the last four or five games of the year, that he's starting to not solely rely on just a guy rather than be able to, like most successful quarterbacks will do, is take what the defense gives you, even if that's not the first, second, or third guy. And he's athletic enough and got the arm to make a lot of throws other people can't. And he's playing for one of the best play callers. So I think that offense, whoever's in there, with, whether it's uh, um, is it Travis um, Kelsey, mm -hmm. the tight end, and um, uh, basically whoever Travis Patrick Mahomes is throwing to, I like them all. 
Uh, you got the Raiders and Chargers talking about getting off to a big start. These are two teams expected to be in it at the end in the AFC Championship game. Well, any Raiders starter at a skill position is a go. Eckler and Herbert, of course, and maybe Keenan Allen. You know, Keenan Allen's sort of an enigma this year. I'm I'm not sure he's the guy this year. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and Eckler, to me, that offense revolves around him. And obviously, they got one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL, in Justin Herbert. And I think, you know, that gives them a chance in every game. And like you said, the Raiders, man, top to bottom, skill-wise, that team's legit. Packers and Vikings, or Rodgers, of course. But after that, I'm not sure who else. The Vikings always Delvin Cook, Thielen, and Cousins. Justin Jefferson also a big go this time. Well, I think the one thing we can all appreciate is how Aaron Rodgers finds ways to make certain players legit. And Robert Tunyon's one of them at tight end. Uh, and he's a red zone phenom in my book and an athletic at tight end as well. Uh, again, who's going to replace um, DeAndre, uh, not DeAndre, but uh, the, the one that went to the Raiders? Devontae. Devontae Adams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone's going to step up and take his, you know, fill that void a little bit. And uh, but like you said, it Rodgers is good at making a lot of people better. And uh, as far as the other, the other side of the ball, you know, Kirk Cousins, a lot of people underestimate his value especially in fantasy. Okay, he doesn't win big games, fine. But in fantasy football is what we're talking about here. He puts up legit points, which means Justin, Re- Jeffer- Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook um, are also going to be right at the top. And Adam, Adam Thielen, if you've got any of those three guys, I'd play him. Bucks and Cowboys, is Brady a QB1? Yes, until he isn't. Fournette is a start. And for the boys, Dak Pollard, Zeke to start the season. And C.D. Lamb, I do really like the tight end Schultz here too. Man, it's the weight of the world on Mike, uh, who's the head coach of the Cowboys. Uh, the guy who is it this the time? Packers. <laughs> Nick, right. <isn't> it? <laughs> well, I mean, the, to me, they are the still most undisciplined team in the NFL. It hurt them last year at times. Uh, and if you are making comments, well, that's just the preseason. Well, your preseason last year bled into the regular season, which kept you out of the playoffs. And then – Again, this preseason was just as bad. So I think if there's anybody on a short leash, it's the head coach of the Cowboys right now. But I do think Zeke's going to have a great year. CeeDee Lamb's going to have a great year. I've completely gone off the rails away from Ezekiel Ella. Tony Pollard is by far their best running back. It's just if he gets enough touches or not. That's been the problem. You know, I have had him in my fantasy dynasty league from the beginning. Matter of fact, I traded up to get him and I did get him. And this year I traded him. I traded him for a second round pick, which was 14th overall, which uh, turned out to be um, George Pickens, uh, who I took. Okay. And and But I have Tony Pollard. And I think, you know, they're they're opening up the offense more to Pollard this year in the passing game. Uh, yeah. I just don't think Zeke gets enough touches. And if he gets the touches, he's great. But the last couple of years, he's not been getting the touches. They've they've used him as a decoy down by the down in the red zone, you know, which is legitimate because you want to score. Right. I and mean, he's played obviously it doesn't help you if you happen in the fantasy league, which is not, you know. Right. Good, you know. But to his credit, he has played through a couple of knee injuries yes. and, and uh, so forth. But I think we can all see Tony Pollard. There's no doubt about it. Who's the better of the two? It's just one guy makes this much money and one guy doesn't. Yeah, that's right. Monday, Broncos at Seahawks. Well, it doesn't get much better than this for an opener. Look for Russell Wilson to light it up against his ex mates, which means Jerry Judy goes off as well. And look for DK Metcalf to have a huge day throwing it back at Wilson. Denver RB1, Javante Williams, also a solid pick to go off here. I agree with you. I, I think the Broncos got a wake-up call in that game they had preseason-wise against Buffalo. And uh, that's, to me, they woke up the following game. And I think from here on out, now that uh, all the starters are going to be back playing again, you know, this is a this is one of the legit Super Bowl contender with Denver Broncos. And I think the Seahawks are going in the opposite direction. They've, you know, not only Russell Wilson leave, so did Bobby Wagner. Uh, they really don't have somebody on either side of the ball where things revolve around. And so hey, I if, think you don't get, Bron- and if you don't get Metcalf the ball, you know, you don't score. You know, you have to get him the ball. And I, I think maybe with Drew Locke this year, I think we may see him get more targets. You know, maybe it's the intimidation factor. Maybe it's, hey, we don't have other guys. You know, I don't know. I just think 
Metcalf's going to get the ball targeted more this year. Um, as you know, the last couple of years I've been down on Wilson, but I like him uh, in, in Denver now. So anyway, that's they, it. They, they, you know, Go ahead. Doug Baldwin is a great receiver too with yep. the right quarterback. I yep. mean, but now that Russell Wilson's gone, how great is he going to be? I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Well, that'll do it for another edition of Kramer and Brill. Don't forget to join us next time wherever you get your shows and on my Bob Brill YouTube channel for my friend and colleague, Eric Kramer. We'll see you next time.